Hey, fam, what's up? Hello. I am here feeding bananas to Alicia, and I'm really excited to be live with all of you. I'm gonna have my special guest from the other day join me again. It is my brother-in-law, Mike, who is co-leading um, an experience on the masculine with me. So I'm very, very, very excited to also do this live stream with him. It's gonna be really fun. It's gonna be about 10 minutes long and we're for real gonna keep to that 10 minute mark because Mike brought that masculine yeah, structure yeah. And we're just gonna chat for 10 minutes with all of you, have a really good time, and then hop off. So I'm really excited. You can probably tell by the title of this that um, what we're gonna be talking about is men being in their masculine with health. So like actually prioritizing their health. There's a lot of women that I coach, have coached, know, <laughs> who have really good men in their lives who do not prioritize their health, are not in their healthiest body, and it can really bug them. So I'm going to look over here to add Mike to our live stream. Let's see if he's on yet. Not yet. Okay, so I'm sure I'll see him when he comes on here. Um, but yeah, we're just kind of talking about this topic because it's a pretty big deal. And we've been talking a lot lately. If you didn't catch our last live stream, we talked about um, about how we each, like women or people who are in their primarily feminine essence, we, and all people truly, but... Um, like men to people in their masculine essence. Everybody has a story about men in the masculine. And the story that you have tells what you will get from men. So how they will treat you, how they will behave around you, how they'll take care of their own selves. It's all a reflection of our own beliefs. And you know, really interestingly, I was just commenting back to someone on my very last post that I just put up about how it's so huge, like huge, 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 that our culture teaches us to be like, you know, if our, if our person, our partner, our man is not showing up at their best, our culture, our world has made it like a normalized thing to talk to your friends and, you know, kind of like complain about how your man's not showing up for you, you know, how... He needs to, oh, looks like Mike's joining, how he needs to show up better. We're never taught that that is a, how he's showing up for us is a reflection of us. So when we're complaining to our girlfriends or the people in our world that our person, what's up Mike? What's going on sis? Hey, when we're complaining to the people in our world that our man is not showing up for us, what we should really be saying is, I have the story of the masculine. He's just mirroring it back to me. <laughs> and that's what I'm experiencing. And it sucks and I don't like it. And I'm not doing anything to change it. So that's why I'm frustrated. Like that would be a more constructive, healthy conversation if we could have that with our girlfriends. What's up, Mike? <laughs> yeah, I'm just, just I mean, like on a little soapbox there for a second. That was, that was beautiful. I caught the tail end of it. And I mean, on the masculine side as a man, I, I just remember sitting at a table with a group of four other guys and just started having talking about the introspect of myself with the feminine one time. And they all just looked at me, their jaws dropped. And ever since that time, like there's like four other guys now who we spend time together just talking about how we're showing up in relationships, partnerships. And it's like that moment is like what took us to a space of like, let me look at myself first before I look at anything in any relationship I ever have. It's been powerful. Well, <laughs> yeah, I'm glad you brought that up because there's the whole reverse of that too because it's also a really big thing in men's culture in our world too to also say, hey, like my partner sucks for this reason or hey, my partner's not showing up or I want my partner to be like that instead of us just being like, uh, here's my story. This is what I'm receiving back because this is my story. And I'm going to call myself out on it. And now I'm going to make change. Yeah. 
you know, this might be oversimplifying it a little bit, but nine out of 10 times what I've seen in, in when, I've, when I'm talking with people about the relationships is there's some type of conditioning or trauma that one person holds. They've attracted their partner who holds the inverse or very similar and maybe in a different way. And they're what they people call trauma bonding and coaching and psychology. And they're, and they're literally just going at each other from probably a younger place in their life. Maybe they're looking at their partner as their mother or father or a past ex. And they're not even realizing that there's actually a place to meet in the middle there. But in order to meet in the middle, you have to go back to yourself first. Look at yourself. And then you walk halfway and you just stand there and say, meet me in the middle. And that person ends up coming. It just takes time. You know, It takes trusting of self. And, and I know that from my own experience of sitting through almost two years of not speaking to the most beautiful woman in my life who is my mother. And I cried the day when she said, I'll meet you halfway, son. Wow. Man, women have showed up completely different in my life since that moment. You know? Yeah. <sighs> yeah, that was one of the most beautiful things I've gotten to see. <laughs> Such tears. I got to be present for that. Um, I was just in tears because it was such a beautiful, real, authentic moment. Because in families, a lot of times, you know, there's these like boundaries and these invisible walls that like we don't cross or we're told not to cross. And um, in our family, what's been so cool this year, I've been talking about this a lot on like different posts and different things. I've been sharing that our family has been doing some really beautiful work this year. And the thing that I really love among many things that I love about it, I really love the fact that those like, there aren't walls there. There isn't structure or hierarchy or anything in our family, left in our family. There's just pure authenticity, realness. One person can talk to another person. Hey, this is how I'm feeling. They receive it. They, you know, do whatever they're going to do with it. And then it's done. And everybody feels clear and released. Nobody's taking offense. No one's holding grudges. Like, it's really amazing. Um, so long story short to say, I loved that moment for you and your mom. Thank you. You know, and, 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 and think, thinking back and feeling back to that moment as we talk about it, what I could feel in that moment when it was happening, essentially, if anybody's just joining in, reconciling with my mother, we hadn't spoken in two years, and I could feel the work she had been doing on herself. I could feel her grounding herself and how she was showing up. I could see in her eyes, I could see it in her, I could feel it in her soul, how she was like, I'm showing up differently than I've ever showed up before in this moment. And we, th that same moment has happened 25,000 times, sitting there face to face saying, what are we doing here? How do we meet halfway? How do we reconcile this? And it was just two people standing and, and being in their own power and, and not in their own power as much as understanding their own power and letting it flow through them. I know the next time I talked to her on the phone, which is literally a couple of days ago, our phone call was different. Like I showed up different. She showed up different. I received her differently. Like she was healing the masculine in her, and she, I showed up different. I actually said, "Hey, I just realized I'm, ta I'm talking to you how I've talked to you before, before we reconciled, and it doesn't feel good to me. So I apologize. Let me stop and let me recenter myself." And she's like, "Cool. Mm. It's that easy." <laughs> Uh, yeah, just like that is real communication. That is like people knowing themselves, people seeing themselves. And that's when communicating with anyone, let alone a family member, becomes really fun, really exciting. It brings the, to me, it brings the life back to life. Like a lot of times we're just walking around doing this life thing. Hey, I'm having this conversation with that person. I wish I said this, but I didn't say it. I'm thinking that about that person, but I didn't say that thing, or I shouldn't have said that thing I said, but I'm just going to keep rolling with it. And I don't, I feel like those moments are the ones where we're kind of capping life and we're kind of just like keeping it all like boxed up. And in the kind of conversations that you're having with your mom, like our entire family is having with each other and the way that we operate in life just with other humans that we come across and meet is so authentic and it's so real that it feels like life. Yeah. You know, then you, then you think about, like, we've been living life this entire time, but man, living life from a foundation.
foundation of how you desire to operate, how you desire to show up, devoid of your conditionings. And not to say they're still not there in my life and they're not there in your life, they're there, but we honor them and we, we, we love them and we allow them to sit in the moment with us and we say, wait a minute. And we shift over and we show up exactly how we desire to show up in that moment. And the same life you've been living, we live it differently in that moment. And you can just see the way people receive you is different. You can see the way you receive yourself is different. You don't walk in shame anymore. Even this, if you do have a shameful thought, you say, thank you. And eventually those shameful thoughts never even come back. Yeah. And it shows up in different places. I think we might have mentioned it last time we spoke, but it shows up in career. It shows up in finances. It shows up in relationships with people. It shows up in you know, friendships, partnerships. It shows up in your relationship with yourself. It shows up in just walking down the street and random strangers. And you get to see reflections in every aspect and say, wait a minute, I get to be, I get to live life every second of the day. <sighs> that's what's up. <laughs> that is yeah, that's really what's fun. up. And what you said about everything is it's a feeling like the way people feel you and experience you and the way you feel and experience people and the way I do and the way anybody who's choosing to operate this way does, you feel something. It, you can feel with the person even having to speak, even though you're probably speaking or I'm probably speaking, you can feel that realness, that aliveness, that connection. It's like a, there's a, a rightness in my own uh, experience of it like it's like I feel right I'm like oh yeah this is who I'm supposed to be talking to this is how I'm supposed to be talking this is where I'm supposed to be this is where I'm supposed to be going mm -hmm. and that's the fun of life for me it's feeling alive and whether it's a feeling or like nature showing up for you or I mean fries and yay are the biggest confirmations I've ever had in my life you know if anybody who can see me right now i have no hair but when i was two three four years old i had a head full of hair just like fries and when he came into the world and his hair started looking just like mine and i started to realize i looked just like that young man the confirmations i got on how to be my own man from this one two three year old human he was my guidance and then i get guidance in everything i do from that and that that actually showed up i started seeing those confirmations that guidance when the fifth and then started coming into my life and like being like, hey, it's time to shape, shape up. Mm -hmm. And I got the message loud and clear. Mm -hmm. You know, and, 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 and when, you, when you brought the topic up to me a little bit before we got on, I remember a period where, where there was a woman in my life and she was constantly coming at me from a place of her conditioning, maybe her fear, maybe what she wanted. And from a, she was coming at me from a place of, of how she wanted her life, life to be from her, her viewpoint. And I, and I'll never forget, I was sitting there and I was like, how do I hold space in my house for us to be free here? She was coming to my house a lot and her saying I, she wanted life. She wanted us to interact a certain way, lit a fire under my butt where I was like, you know what? I want to test out what it means to hold space for us so we can be free in a space together and not have it nitpicking and not trauma bonding, not going back and forth. And I, I realized in that moment that it was actually her shift and saying one day to me, she said, I, I don't know how to feel safe, even though she didn't feel unsafe. She said, I don't know how to feel safe with the mask. She just said that to me. She took like ownership of it one day. And I was like, but do I know how to hold space for her to feel safe? Mm. Like the minute she said that, it just like clicked in my mind. It was like what the catalyst was, the confirmation. Like, oh, I'm supposed to, to work on this on myself. And the next thing you know, we just started figuring it out differently at different times and simultaneously. Mm -hmm. Change the game. Yeah. I mean, when you have that moment of, we talked about this a bit on our last live stream that we did. When you have the moment of awareness, all of a sudden there's a curiosity that peaks there's a i can't unsee this that happens and from there the adventure begins yeah yeah we're hit we're hit the 10 minute mark so I, I, with that being said um anybody who watches this sounds like look at
look out for those little confirmations, not like, oh, what does that mean for my life going on? But like, what does it mean for this moment right now for you? Like, what does it mean for you now that's confirming the work you've been doing that says, wait a minute, I, I am exactly where I'm supposed to be. So I know exactly what I'm supposed to be doing and how I'm supposed to be doing it and why I'm supposed to be doing it. Not for the future, not for the past, but literally for the moment. And when you get those moments there, things unfold for you. I've, I mean, I've seen it. I'm, I'm a testament to it. You're a testament to it. I'm sure people who hear this are like, wow, yeah, that happens in my life right now, you know? And we miss it a lot, so don't miss it anymore. Yeah, definitely leave us a comment on here, like after the live stream, after you pay attention to that, because we would love to hear what comes up for you. Yeah, I'd love to hear it. Yay. Well, thanks for holding the masculine container to our mark, Mike. I really appreciate that. Feels so nice for my feminine to just be like, yes, okay, cool. <laughs> to have that container. And um, thanks for going live with me on here. I'm psyched to do another one with you soon. And um, Yay got really excited when you talked about her earlier. Hi, Yay. Hi. I love you. Okay, we love you. Love you, Mike. Love, love you, you, everybody. Bye, sis. See you soon. Bye, Yay. Bye. Did I say bye-bye?